Hi there. I'm really excited because Nate just called me and he said that the irrigation guy is on his way. It's a couple days after we originally thought he was coming. Uh, this guy is the one who discovered that we have a leak in our irrigation system. And that's one of the reasons why we have a terrible flooding situation every time we have a massive rain. So, um, this guy insisted that when we let it dry up for a couple of weeks, we ask for him to be scheduled in particular to come back. Uh, they scheduled somebody else, so uh, they apologize and they're like, we're sorry, we didn't realize we'll send the, the right guy out. So today, the right guy is coming out and hopefully we're gonna get it fixed. I'll see if I can try to get clips of him. I don't know if he'll want to be on the camera, but We'll see. <laughs> well, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. So we're here to take care of the leak over there. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we're gonna be here for a little bit. Okay. We'll let you know what was going on. Okay, thank you very You're much. You're welcome. If you need anything, let me know. Okay, we will. Okay, thank you. thanks. And I'll try to get some of it, but I kind of don't want to bother them. Let's just let them do their work. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just let them kind of figure it out. Maybe we'll try to get some clips of what's going on out there. Right now they're just raking back the mulch. Probably to dig. Oh, there's a swallowtail butterfly. You think, bud? Got some entertainment today? You gonna watch him? He's trying to get out the window. I took the screen off so we could see better and cracked it so we could try to hear. So those are our uh, sprinklers that we have. And just like a side note, that's pretty much the only way my plants get watered is if they get hit by those sprinklers. Those are just the uh, grass sprinklers. Right, buddy. So he's looking at the hole right now, trying to see if he can find the leak. from that zone. Well, the boys are gone now and they did find a leak. There was no leak in the line, like what he thought, uh, but there was a leak in one of the heads over there and it was right by like the flood area, basically. So they fixed that leak and they also said, uh, we might have our sprinkler system running too many times a day and too many times a week. So right now we have it running twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. And we also have it running every day. So every day, twice a day. And they said that usually for their clay soil customers, they recommend only running it once a day for like three to four days a week. So we're definitely running it a little bit more than we need to. So they fixed the head, so that, that's good. He said that that right there should fix the problem. This is the head right here that they had to fix. So they discovered that what was happening was since that head was broken, all of the water was just leaking and pooling around that area. Since we have such poor clay soil, it just had nowhere to go. And then we've got a pretty good amount of mulch on top of it and mulch helps retain moisture. So on top of that, it's a very low spot. So with all of those things going on, he said there's just nowhere for the water to go and to drain out. So they're hoping that now that that head is fixed, it's not gonna leak any water anymore. So they said that should fix the problem. They still have the zones running every day, once every day. So he said, we're pretty sure that will fix the problem, but if you do find that you continue to flood here, then 
uh, we might think about dropping it down to like five days a week or something like that. Really glad that they found the leak and they got it fixed. I do have a couple of plants, which I'm, I can't believe I'm only saying a couple of plants. With the way this is flooded in here and as horrible as the soil is up here, I'm surprised every single one of these plants isn't just on death's door. But uh, we do have this hydrangea down here that's struggling. This is right in the thick of it. And then we also have uh, the, the couple of bleeding heart, which I actually got two more the other day at the nursery. I picked up a couple, they were on sale. Uh, so I've got a couple to replace those. I'll probably move those to a different area because I don't think they're completely dead. Uh, and honestly, I mean, that lemony lace elderberry looks a little bit questionable, but the rest of these plants, I, I'm so surprised. I can't believe how great they look for what they've been put through. So I think it's safe to plant my trees in here. I've got three little what kind of lollipop trees that I've been saving until the guy comes to fix this. They're on the other side of my house. So we'll go collect those and we will get those planted. So I've got three little trees here. I've got this blue, limey green one, and then a regular straight dark green. And they're all evergreen, so they will look this nice in the winter time as well. That middle one there said that it does turn kind of like a bronzy color in the winter. But this one I wanted to do right here. I actually put these three orange heuchera in here. These are called caramel heuchera. I put these in here knowing that I wanted a glow blue spruce in here because uh, I just love blue and orange together. They just look really neat. So this is a glow blue spruce on a standard and I already have one up up there in my yard and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite trees in my yard. So full sun 
dense, compact, globe shape. Evergreen shrub has stiff, bright blue needles, and it does. It stays this bright blue color all season long. Even in the winter, it's just really pretty. Excellent selection as an accent or specimen plant. Uh, zone three, I'm in a zone kind of four slash five, so it's perfect. Uh, moderate water, rich, deep, well-draining soil. So we'll be sure to put compost in there. I've got tons of compost that I'm gonna uh, mix up in this clay soil and then also raise it up. Uh, three to four feet wide and tall. Yeah, it's just a really great plant. I love it so much. And I got this for 25% off, I think. And then down here, down here we have the Sienna Sunset uh, Arborvitae, Thuja Aniac. I don't know if that's how you say that. Uh, and it says, It says, this mature arborvitae will maintain a compact globe shape. Branching is very short and covered with dense foliage, soft and green at the core. Uh, the foliage has yellow tips in winter. It transformed to a, transforms to a bronzy orange. Sun to part sun. Prefers well-drained soil as most things do. So again, we're going to put compost in the hole, mix it up really good, and plant it uh, high one to two feet tall and wide so it probably won't get much bigger than that which is awesome uh, zone three perfect and yeah there we go looks great same thing with my caramel heuchera down there i planted these kind of reddish purplish salvia be knowing that i wanted to plant some sort of a limey green tree right there to kind of contrast the color i thought it looked really good together and it kind of plays off of this purplish Midnight Masquerade Penstemon with my Bright Ideas uh, sedum there. And then down here, so going into the gully, there's just lots of color going on and it's beautiful. I love it so much. So I thought to kind of let that stand alone, I would get just a straight, you know, a straight color green tree right here. So this one is called the Dwarf Hinoki False Cypress. A slow growing dwarf plant with interesting flattened sprays of yellowish green foliage, full sun, well drained. Again, grows three feet tall and wide, zone five. So hopefully this will do okay here. I think it, it should. I have some more of this type of plant in my yard and it does just fine. It comes back just fine. So I think we will will be okay here. My flip flop just broke. <laughs> I've had these for like probably seven years or so. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go get a different flip flop and we'll be oh, on our way. so cool already. Just that little extra pop of height. All right, we're just gonna move all this mulch out of the way. Save as much of it as we can. This up here isn't as bad. It's still clayey, but um, it's not. For some reason, it's like right down in that area is the worst. If I dig up any like chunks of clay, I will remove it out of here. I don't see any yet. Uh, so I'm kind of just going to leave this here and put quite a bit of compost on there. 
mix it in. Man, I could get a different shirt out here now. It's starting to heat up. Need a t-shirt. Alright, that's a lot. <laughs> but we're just gonna mix it in. Okay, I brought this bucket out here so I can make a hole. I'm gonna go inside, get a different shirt on cause it's super muggy out here. And I'm also go gonna go grab some water to put in this hole and I'll be right back. Alright, let's see what this looks like. That might work. I think that'll work. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, so now this rough up these roots just a tad. Looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna put water in the hole not too much and then I'm also going to throw some of this happy frog fertilizer on there and then backfill it And I know this looks really high, but I'm going to, I want to mound this up so that the water can kind of drain down. Just pack it in there. where the rip ball is. Some more. There, so it's kind of creating like a, a runoff zone there. gonna get the rest on here and I'm pulling it away so this this right here is the top of the root ball I'm just kind of pulling it away packing it in hopefully that will be okay then I'm just gonna water that down a little bit Put the mulch back, but not not up against the tree uh, trunk. So you can see it kind of created like a a bit of a mound. And if you can't see, I'll show you later. And then I'll probably just keep an eye on the rest of these plants out here. If I see that they they are struggling, I'll do the same thing. I've already done it to the hydrangea and any other new plant that I planted in here. 
but all right looks good let's take it down here So this section down here is not nearly as bad, but I'm still gonna raise it up as best as I can. and get a drink of water and cool down a little bit because it was getting hot out here but boy oh boy is it a nice day it's like super breezy and sunny with a few scattered clouds it's just beautiful weather today but let's take a look at what we did and then uh, I also have a couple really good ideas well I think they're good ideas <laughs> we'll see uh, but all right Let's turn it around. I think it's looking really great. We have a little bit of shade right now. Uh, the sun went behind a cloud. So you can kind of see the colors a little bit better, but I love putting contrasting colors from the color wheel together. So this is an example of that orange and blue. They're contrasting on the color wheel and they look really great together. Kind of like opposites attract and that's kind of what we have going on here. And then one of my ideas was to just get a couple more of this caramel heuchera and carry it this way. So like one, two, just a couple more. We'll see. Cause that eventually this, this canopy here will get fairly, fairly big. Just like my other one up there, which I could go show you in a second. Uh, I gotta, you know, fix that up. Obviously we'll do that a different day. Uh, but this is kind of what I was talking about as well. So yellow and purple, these are opposites on the color wheel and they look really good together. So once this Midnight Masquerade Pensman grows up and these grow in, those colors will look good together. And I kind of carry that down here, except for opposite. So we've got the yellow Sienna Sunset and then right below it are these purple Salvia. So that's going to be cool. And then I kind of carried that down here as well. So the purple and yellow look really good together. Now, this is my other great idea, I think. Another opposite on the color wheel is green and red. That's why Christmas is so much fun. So I actually have a couple of Mahogany Monster Heuchera that I think I'm going to put in here. And that will look really pretty together. Uh, with this green, so it'll be green and red. I have three mahogany monster and I have three peach berry ice that my mom gave me. So I'll I'll put them in here and see what one looks the best. But I'm I'm thinking I'll probably go with the mahogany monster to play off of this. Hope that you really loved just this planting of a few lollipop trees in the lane. I think it's really coming together and I'm excited that we finally have a little bit of a solution now that the boys fixed that sprinkler head. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I know you guys have been cheering me on with this whole like low spot, clay, poor draining soil, leaky 
bloody situation. Uh, you've been giving me lots of suggestions and advice from your expertise and experience that you've had. So I truly am very grateful and appreciate it uh, so much. So um, if I can be honest, I probably wouldn't have ever thought of something as putting compost into the hole. I just have really great soil everywhere else in my garden. My garden is just like thriving literally everywhere else and I've never had to add compost before. I've added compost to like my roses and things like that uh, just because I had never done roses before last. Last year was the first year that I've ever done roses and uh, it said on the website to add compost so that's why I did it. But that's not anything that's like on my radar so even something as simple as that I probably wouldn't have done but because of you guys I've done that and I can already see the effects of it from the plants that I fixed from previous weeks. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, but anyway, I hope that you just enjoyed hanging out with me up here in the lane. And I also hope that you have a great rest of your day. Just enjoy every second that you have. So thanks again. We'll see you later. Bye.